Hello, my name is Ronald Houston. I'm on the faculty of the Southern Methodist University's Meadows School of the Arts, and I run the JDR Music Academy here in Plano, Texas. From observing so many people playing their instruments, I see a lot of people being super emotional like this. And then I always tend to kind of close my eyes and I'll see, I'll say to myself, you know, they're moving a lot and it looks like they're emotional, but I don't really hear anything. A guy that actually I went to school with and never met while I was at school, unfortunately, but his name is Rick Beato. Everybody should look this guy up on the internet. He does um, rock and roll videos and he has like three or four million subscribers on YouTube and he does things about why is this song great? Why is that song great? He teaches theory. But what I love about Rick is that he's a real proponent of classical music and that he, he does things, why is Bach great? Why is Beethoven great? The other day he did a wonderful video about Martha Argerich, who um, is arguably the um, greatest pianist of our generation, or I guess the generation before us. And um, I was watching the video and watching some of the videos she made a long time ago that are just so beautiful. And I was thinking, you know, she doesn't move around. She doesn't do all these things that we have to do these days to get attention. She just sits there and beautifully plays the piano. It's no less emotional. It's um, beautiful to hear. And I thought, yeah, you know, it's nice to, it's, it's actually a good thing that we move when we play so that people can understand that there is emotion visually, but at the same time, the real emotion comes from our technique and our management and how we present something it's like a piece of art. So I tell students a lot about, about this painting by Picasso called Guernica, um, G-U-E-R-N-I-C-A. I hope to God that I spelled that right. The Guernica painting by Picasso is um, arguably one of the more um, emotional paintings um, that was done in the 20th century. And one of the more important paintings from a very historical perspective. When I saw the painting the first time, I started to reflect and think to myself, what was Picasso thinking about? Was he thinking this is going to be this historically worthy painting for generations and generations to come? Or was he just painting? I, I think the latter. I think that he just picks up his brushes or whatever he does when he starts a painting and thinks, okay, I'm going to draw this like this. I'm going to paint this. I'm going to use this style. I'm going to make this stroke like this. Just like we really should take a look at a piece of music. Mm -hmm. And then the end product becomes something that's very emotional. Not really for him, but for all of his viewers of his paintings. When somebody's listening to the playing and saying, that is so beautiful, what is the artist thinking? The artist is generally thinking, um, full bow, short bow, something like that. So they're thinking, how do I technically present this that there's, the music is as clear as possible. I call it transparency. The more that I can play the music as it is on the page and, and that it has no extra additives to it and it's as clear as possible the more that we're able to listen to it and see through if you had this tiny green flower and it's really beautiful and it's sitting in a forest that's full of greenery and weeds and all these things what do you see well you don't see the flower you just see a bunch of weeds and trees but if it were in a desert and you say you saw the same flower you'd say oh my gosh look at that from miles away what a beautiful flower that is that's kind of the approach to technique that we need to have as musicians, that the more clear and transparent that our playing is through our technique and, and management of our skills, the more that our viewers are able to see what we're doing.